star of Rhodesia is one of the most famous of the Earth's treasures. First touched by the fingers of the humble Kaffir, it would have been better had it never been found. For all those who possessed it came to sudden and violent death. Our story opens in London within the sound of bow bells. In the shadow of Tower Bridge is the carpenter's shop of Mark and Son, coffin makers. A beautiful job, if I may say so. You'll be sure to have it at the undertaker's in time. Of course. The Scotch Express leaves Euston Station at 7.30 tonight. That leaves very little time for the arrangement of the body. Your mother, is it not? Yes. You are taking her to Scotland? Yes, Edinburgh. Her home. Oh. Thank you. Rather a nuisance. Traveling by train. Ain't it? I'll get you. Go on, get on about your business. I'm terribly sorry. Mr. Holmes? Hello. I was afraid you wouldn't get here in time. I was studying the faces of our fellow passengers. Fascinating hobby, and sometimes most enlightening. Lady Margaret is aboard the train, I presume? Oh, yes, Mother's expecting you. I've reserved a compartment for you and your friend, Dr. Watson. As a matter of fact, it's in this coach here, just ahead of the luggage van. Day coach? Yes, the sleepers are all taken. Mother wasn't interested in her bed so much as she wasn't getting to Edinburgh. So naturally, it wasn't very difficult to persuade her to travel in a day coach. Exactly. It had been open to take on additional passengers. So I observed. I say, it was awfully decent of you to come, considering the fact that I was so secretive about it all. Oh, my dear Mr. Carstairs, there was no need for secrecy. I already knew. You knew that Mother insisted on bringing the star of Rhodesia with her to London? And that while here, an attempt had been made to steal it. Did Scotland Yard tell you that? <laughs> oh, no, my dear Mr. Carstairs. But the fact that your mother owns the famous diamond is common knowledge. She came down to London to attend the reception of Buckingham Palace and, quite naturally, wore the star of Rhodesia. You want me to accompany you back to your home in Edinburgh. Therefore, an attempt must have been made to steal the star of Rhodesia while you were here in London. It seems simple the way you explain it, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'll wait here for my friend, Dr. Watson. I can't think what's keeping him. Mother and I will be expecting you. Oh, uh, could I take this for you? Oh, I'd be much obliged. Thank you. We'll be in compartment E. Yes. Ticket, please. Here's your carriage, sir. Well, 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 look who's here. Inspector Lestrade. Why, Mr. Holmes. Taking your trip, Inspector? Fishing, eh? Bit of an holiday. Oh, that's very nice. Uh, trout? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Rather large rods for trout, aren't they? Salmon, perhaps. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm going mostly for the rest. As a matter of fact, you're on a job for Scotland Yard, aren't you? I, uh, trust this is the uh, right carriage. This is where we take care of the overflow, sir. Oh, I see. Porter will take your bags. I'll carry this myself, if you don't mind. Ready to go, sir. Half past seven, eh? We always leave on time. Mind your head, sir.
Watson! Coming, Holmes! Watson! All right, Holmes, they're coming! I beg your pardon. I beg your Thank you for your timely assistance, sir. Really, Watson, aren't you a little stuff with this sort of thing? Rubbish. I deal weight for a man of my age. Ran into an old friend of mine, Duncan Bleak. They took the cloth Indian lance, so Major Duncan Bleak, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. How do you do, sir? I'm delighted. I've heard quite a lot about you. India, eh? Retired 15 years ago. As a matter of fact, we were reminiscing about India. Didn't realize how late it was. It stays light so long these days, we almost missed the train. Yes, yeah, so I've heard. In here, sir. Right. Thank you. Uh, doctor, would you care to join me in a glass of whiskey and a dash of soda before dinner? No, ma'am. It's a good idea. What's it all about, Holmes? Did you ever hear of Lady Margaret Carstairs, famous diamond, the star of Rhodesia? There was something in last week's tackle about the old girl being in London with a bauble. Wasn't there, Holmes? Yes, there was. She's on this train. That's why we're here, to see that this bauble, as you call it, gets safely back into its vault at Edinburgh. Hmm, sounds to me like... Pardon me. Sounds to me like a police routine job. That's where you're wrong, old fellow. An attempt to make away with in London was unsuccessful. A second attempt will, in all probability, be made on this train. Well, huh? What makes you say that? Well, well, it seems more than likely that the people who planned the first attempt will not be discouraged by one failure and will stop at nothing to ensure success the second time. Sounds like Lestrade's cup of tea to me. Lestrade? He's on this train. Oh, is he? <laughs> giving an excellent imitation of Isaac Walton. Thank you, Mr. Gordon, gents. Well, come in, Mr. Burns. My friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. How do you do? I thought it better to engage Mr. Holmes after what happened in London. No doubt you're an efficient person, but I don't think there's any need for a policeman. Policeman? Huh. How long have you been in possession of the Star of Rhodesia, Lady Margaret? Twenty-five years. You know, it may seem strange to you, but uh, I've never actually seen it. I suppose there's no harm since we're paying you to guard it. Mother. Yes? May I? Do, by all means. Thank you. Great Scott. What a remarkable stone. My husband gave it to me on our fifth wedding anniversary. 423 carats, isn't it? The original diamond was over 700 carats. Yes. Your father had it cut. Less ostentatious. Ostentatious is as big as a duck's egg. Watson, please. Oh, sir. Thank you, Lady Margaret. We'll be as unobtrusive as possible. That will be a novelty from a policeman. Now, if you wouldn't mind telling us where our compartment is. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. Oh, thank you. Lady Margaret. Good night. Good night. Good night. Impertinence. She called us policemen. And what's wrong with being a policeman? Oh, hello, Lestrade. Where are you going? The inspector's going to Scotland to fish for salmon. Oh, really? The season doesn't start for another month, but you wouldn't know that, would you? Who says I'm going to fish for salmon? Who? Him. Excuse me, please. Police. Police? Here? On the train? Scotland Yard, I heard. I warned you. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Oh, this way, please. <laughs> well, there you are, Holmes. Try some of this curry. It's excellent. Steak and kidney pudding, please. Bengal curry doesn't compare with that of Madras. No, it's the quality of the mutton that makes a difference, don't you think? The, uh, the meat's unimportant. It's the spices that make the difference. Don't you agree with me, Holmes? What? I said we were, we were discussing curry. Oh, yes, curry, horrible stuff. Oh, really? One man's meat is another man's poison. Of a steward. My son will be here directly.
My dear fellow, I still insist the unpolished wild rice does make a considerable difference to a good curry. Well, I still can't agree with you. Take care of this for me, will you, Watson? I shall, sure, fellow. One of them. Was young Carstairs in the dining car with you? No, Lady Margaret came in alone. Well, I was in my compartment just now, having a bite to eat, and I heard a crash in here. Crash? It's locked. I knocked, and there was no answer. So you just stood here twiddling your thumbs. Brilliant. Attendant, yes, will you please unlock this door? I'm sorry, sir. It's this is the... Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. That's all right. You can open it. Very good, sir. Is this the, uh... Yes. Star of Rhodesia was in this box not 45 minutes ago. How do you know? I saw it. Well, it might be here somewhere. No, no good looking for it, Lestrade. Killer's got it. Ah, oh, there you are, Holmes. How about joining us Take in the... Take this body, Willie Watson. Body? Good Scott. How do you know it's murder, Mr. Holmes? Murder? Oh, I say. Who are you? Major Duncan Preak, a friend of Dr. Watson's. Oh. Well, what, what makes you so sure it's murder, Mr. Holmes? The door was locked. Every attendant has a key. Did you open this door for anyone during the last hour? No, sir. Was the key ever out of your possession? It never is, sir. It's on a chain. It's to me like heart failure. Uh -huh. Any marks of violence on the body? None that I can see. You seemed to have missed it this time, didn't you, Mr. Holmes? Possibly. Still, if it was a natural death, it came at a very convenient time, didn't it? Hmm? What does this mean? Rudisha, it's gone. You were supposed to guard it. My son employed you. That's why I left it with him. Where is he? I'm sorry, Lady Margaret. It was thoughtless of us to let you come in like this. You're an empty compartment? Yes, sir. Then I think we'd better, if you don't mind, Lady Margaret, please. Poor chap's mother, I presume. Yeah. Well, let's get to the bottom of this. Uh, excuse me, Doctor. Poor chap, he was so young. It's such a pity. I have sent for the conductor, Lestrade. You want to talk to him, and I've asked that no one be allowed to leave this coach. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Shall we use my compartment? Thanks. Attendant. Yes, sir. Lock that door and let no one go in without my permission. You understand? Very good, sir. Right. Sorry, old man. Official police business. Well, that's all right. I'll catch up with you later. Are you looking for the Scotland Yard inspector, sir? Uh, why, yes. Right in there, sir. Thank you. Sorry, sir. No one's allowed to leave the carriage. Can't leave the carriage? Whose ridiculous idea was that? Scotland Yard. Scotland. You see, we don't stop until we reach Rugby. That's right, sir. Good. We'll have a thorough search of the train made before that time. Find the murderer, Inspector, and you'll find the diamond. But we don't know it was murder. Consider the facts, Lestrade. Young Carstairs was dead when the jewel was taken. Otherwise, he'd have put up a struggle, and there were no marks of violence on the body. If, however, he died a natural death, we must assume that the thief happened to be on hand just at the right moment, which is outside the realm of probability. No, Lestrade, in this case, nothing was left to chance. That's why I say find the murderer and you'll find the diamond. How do we know the thief didn't leave the carriage before we discovered the body? The attendant was in the corridor the entire time, and he's certain that no one passed into the dining car. The door at the other end leads into the luggage van. Which is always locked. Hmm. 
You found no marks of any kind on the body, Watson? No, none of any significance. Not even a scratch? Well, there was a small spot of blood on his neck, just a mere speck. That's what I was referring to. You mean that scratch killed him? It's possible the poison that went into the wound did. Poison? Well, we can't tell that without an autopsy. Mm. Have you got a list of the passengers in this carriage? Uh, yes, sir. There you are, sir. Thank you. Major Duncan Bleak. That would be your friend, Doctor. The next compartment's empty. Where well, we took Lady Margaret after the murder. You remember those, Stroud. Go on. Vivian Vedder, Inspector Lest That's this one. Lady Margaret Carstairs and the Honourable Roland Carstairs. Professor William Kilbane, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred Shellcross, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Well, that would be you two. Well, I think I shall ask a few questions. Vivian Vedder. We'll start with her, whoever she is. Vedder, compartment C. Oh, here we are. Empty. Sir Holmes, are you going to let Lestrade handle this thing by himself? Well, after all, he does represent the official police, you know. Oh, well, with him doing the questioning and looking under the seat cushions for diamonds, we won't know any more than we're through than we do now. I could do it better myself. Why don't you, old fellow? Huh? By Jove, I think I will. Probably find out just as much as the Strad would anyway. I'll do it at once. Oh, yes. That's where we just came from. What? Yes, sir? Oh, that's where the body is. Well, I'll start with this one. <coughs> yes? My name's Watson. Dr. Watson. Oh, to what am I indebted for this intrusion? I'm afraid I've got to ask you one or two questions what you're doing on the train, where you're going, things like that, you know. Why? Customary. Uh, there's been a, a murder committed. Scotland Yard, uh, murder Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes and I... What about Sherlock Holmes? We're cross-examining suspects. Suspects? Of what am I suspected? Oh, the fellow's dead. Murdered, you know. Now, let me get this straight. You say a murder has been committed on this train? Yes, uh, next compartment. And because a perfect stranger to me got himself murdered, you come to question me? Well, we've got to question everybody. Are you a policeman? No. Then by what right do you force your way into my compartment? Well, I... Uh... What are you doing on this train? Where are you going? Not going anywhere. Holmes and I are on the train to watch the... I know. It's a diamond or a pearl oh, or something of fabulous value. This fellow Holmes is always chasing after missing jewels or mysterious females. What is the meaning of this? I'm sorry, Miss Vera, but it was necessary for us to search your compartment. Indeed. May I ask what you expected to find? A valuable jewel has been stolen. And a man has been murdered. We are making a routine search of the entire carriage and asking a few questions. Go right ahead. I understand your journey is rather a sad one. Your mother... Yes. Perhaps we'd better not question Miss Vedder just now, Lestrade. Eh? Excuse us, will you? What's the idea, Mr. Holmes? Not of taste, Lestrade. The young lady is taking her mother to Scotland for burial. In a coffin? That is the customary method, I believe. Lestrade, I think we'll take a look at that coffin. Might prove interesting. Hmm. I was about to suggest that very thing myself, Mr. Holmes. Conductor, I'll have a look in the luggage van. Uh, this way, sir. That I am, Dr. Watson. Dr. John H. Watson of 221B Baker Street. Retired. My friend Sherlock Holmes can vouch for it. Your alibi isn't worth a scotch farthing. 
You've just told me that this fellow Holmes is a crony of yours. Naturally, he'd lie. I resent that, sir. Sherlock Holmes is a very soul of integrity. He might even be an accomplice. Why, if I were a policeman, I'd take you in charge this very moment. I didn't do it, sir. I swear I didn't do it. I can prove it. Prove what, old chap? Oh, there you are, Holmes. Now get out of here and join your silly friend. Did you discover anything, Watson? Yes. It was a very suspicious character. He tried to put me off the scent. From the little I heard, he seemed reasonably successful. Mm. Look here, you're not going to let an old fellow like Professor Kilbane discourage you, are you? Uh, why don't you try this one? You think I'd better? Yes, of course. Mm. All right. Uh, do, do, do you mind if I come in? You may. Thank you. I'm sorry to bother you, but I represent the police. I knew it. Alfred, I told you. Told him what? Well? It's quite all right, Inspector. I'll confess. Confess? You mean you stole it? You, you've got it in there? Yes. No, no, no. Leave it where it is. I'll go and fetch Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. And don't either of you attempt to run away. Oh, no, Inspector. Is this door always kept locked, Conductor? Yes, sir. Only the guard and myself have keys. Mm. Got him, Holmes. Oh. The thieves. Thieves? Well, come on, speak up. There are a couple down there. Mr. Mrs. Sharkroft? Yes, they confessed. Confessed? Broke them down. Gave them the third degree. Uh, and you left them unguarded? I told them not to run away. Well, better have a talk with them. Oh, it's uh, you again. It might interest you to know that I've just caught the thieves. Excuse me, madam. You're the police, I know. Mm. I warned him, but no, he had to take it. Well, I must warn you that anything you say may be used against you. Anything they say. They've already admitted everything. Everything? Yes, they've got it in there. I'd be glad to pay double what it's worth if only they won't prosecute. It's my first offense. You chaps always say the same thing. Come on, hand it over. Where is it? I stole it. I took it from a hotel in London. Come on, come on. In my small way, I'm a collector of teapots. Teapots? Dr. Watson, does this look like a diamond? Not very much, now that you mention it. Well, what's all that about a confession? Well, when I came in here before, they, they said that they took it. Well, your please oblige us, Doctor, by not meddling in police business. This time wasn't entirely wasted, Lestrade. At least you've recovered the teapot. Thank you, Holmes. Teapot. The fellow tries his best, what's he get? Humiliation and abuse. In the start of all people, a good man to chuck up the whole case. Might be a good idea to let the police do their own work. You mind your own business. Oh, there you are, Watson. How about a spot in my compartment? Thanks, old man. Serve them right if I, if I got a bit tiddler. I suppose you realize you'll be turned over to the police as soon as we reach Edinburgh. Dr. Watson, teapots. Why, well, I beg your pardon, Professor Kilbane. You're in the next compartment, aren't you? I am. I'm afraid we'll have to ask you a few questions. Now, don't tell me that you're going to start. You mind? Why, of course I might. Come on, in you go. I didn't mind, but there have been times when... Uh, when your scientist's mind has shown him the way. Exactly. You take the death of young Carstairs, for instance. I knew from the first it was poison. The scientific approach, of course. The murderer used a hypodermic. Some rare poison from, from South America, probably. Or India. Yes, yes, India. I've been to India. So have you. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> well. You've been... <laughs> You've been here. I don't like your attitude, Professor Kilbane. I don't like it at all. Perhaps not. But I'm on this train for legitimate reasons. And I've neither the time nor the inclination to assist you with your work. You're perfectly within your rights, sir. And I'm sure that Inspector Lestrade appreciates that. Thank you, sir. Now, if you have no objection, I have some work to do which requires concentration. Mathematics? Yes. Interesting study. Well, if you don't mind.
Looking for something, Lady Margaret? Oh. I came to get my bag. The door's locked. Naturally. Perhaps I can help you. Mr. Holmes, I must talk to you about the diamond. Oh, don't you worry about that, Lady Margaret. Fifty thousand pounds, and you tell me not to worry. My son employed this man to guard it, and it was stolen right under his very nose. I warn you, I intend to take this matter up with your superiors. I'm a private agent, Lady Margaret. Good. I shall report you both to Scotland Yard. But I am Scotland Yard. Lady Carstairs entered the dining car alone. You and I were already there. Holmes came in later, and I understand that Inspector Lestrade remained in his compartment with the curtains open, so that if anyone had gone in or out, he would have seen them. You see, you've got something there. Well, let's look at this thing objectively. Lady Carstairs seemed more concerned, was more concerned at the loss of the diamond than at the death of her son. Right, George, you're right. So she was. Come in. Oh, here you are, Watson. Oh, sit down. Have a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Do you mind if I, uh... <laughs> Not at all. I've been thinking about this case, Holmes. That is, Duncan Bleak and I have. Yes, so I see. Well, the way we figure it out, the old trout is the only one without an alibi. Yes, we feel that you're approaching the whole thing from the wrong angle. Really, Watson? What's your theory? Insurance. A lot of people insure jewellery and then try and collect on it. Interesting suggestion. I suppose you go and ask Lady Margaret just how much insurance she carries on the Star of Odisha. No, thank you. We've already had two tries. Why don't you ask yourself? For a very simple reason, I already know. You're quite a doofer, sir. Oh, if you know, would you ask me? <laughs> Trying to make a fool of me. Mr. and Mrs. Shawcross. Teapots. Well, we can eliminate them. Professor William Kilbane. I've sent a telegram to the Edinburgh police to check up on that mathematics professor. Interesting. Now what? Well, just a coincidence. What's a coincidence? The fact that this fellow Kilbane happens to be a professor of mathematics. Oh. Come again, Mr. Holmes? Lestar, did you ever hear of Colonel Sebastian Moran? Of course I did. What about him? Well, then, as you know, Colonel Sebastian Moran was the most sinister, ruthless, and diabolically clever henchman of our late but unlamented friend, Professor Moriarty. I've never seen him, but I've been unpleasantly conscious of his presence more than once. As a matter of fact, he was directly responsible for what very nearly turned out to be my premature death on three separate occasions. Very pretty, Mr. Holmes. What's all that got to do with all this? Well, possibly nothing. However, his speciality was spectacular jewel robberies. And for relaxation, he was addicted to the study of uh, mathematics. Are you inferring that this Professor Kilbane is Colonel Sebastian Moran? That he murdered young Carcés and stole the diamond? Well, what about this woman, this uh, Vivian Vedder? What about her? No one's above suspicion. And Lady Margaret. She might have a motive for wanting the star of Radisha stolen. She wasn't very concerned over the death of her son. And this friend of Dr. Watson's, this uh, Major Duncan Bleak, might be just as sensible to suspect him. Now, as far as we know, only four persons knew the star of Radisha was on this train. Yourself, Dr. Watson, the murdered, the dead lad, and myself. And Lady Margaret. And Lady Margaret. I'll have another talk with her ladyship. Lady Margaret, do you mind if I uh, come in?
Go home. I'm gonna leave it open, will you? Lucky beggar. Who's a lucky beggar? Duncan Bleak. Been playing cards with him. He won all the way across, I believe the expression is. Have you been with him all this time? Yeah, just left him. He introduced me to a, a new fangle game. Gin rummy, he called it. American, I believe. A lot of bookkeeping connected with it. You, uh, ever hear of it? Looking for the murderer, Inspector? <laughs> Impossible fellow. Well, there you are. Where else you been? I asked you where you'd been. Hello? What's happened? I've been observing the landscape from the door at the end of the corridor. I've just been along there. I didn't see you. The, the door was shut. Actually, I was on the outside. The outside? Yes. You must try it sometime. We'll take a look at that coffin. If you remember, I was interrupted the last time. Oh, sorry. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, do you mind if I inspect a coffin you're taking to Scotland? No one is allowed in here, Mr. Holmes. I'll take the responsibility. Excuse me. Does it occur to you, Watson, that this is a very unusual coffin? I don't know. A trifle ornate, perhaps. I wasn't thinking of the fittings. It's a... Do you mind if we open it? It's forbidden, sir. Sorry. Go on, Watson. You can't do that, sir. We'll have to. Excuse me, please. Little old lady. As I thought, shallow. Body only comes down to about here. You think there's a secret compartment underneath? There has to be. Empty. Yes, but it's 
It's been recently occupied. We asked Lestrade to come in here. He's with Lady Margaret. Right, Your Holmes. Have you let anyone else in here? No. Now, Alex, eh? Gives me something to do. Come quick. What is it? It's the coffin. Holmes found a false bottom in it. With enough room for the murderer to hide in. What? What is all this, Mr. Holmes? There's where your murderer's been hiding, Mr. Arne. Then it's just a question of finding him, isn't it, Mr. Holmes? Not him, them. Eh? This affair is obviously the work of two men, the one who planned it, and the other who hid in the coffin, and at a prearranged time emerged to commit the murder and effect the robbery. What are you talking about? Colonel Sebastian Moran. You've got that man on the brain, Mr. Holmes. My dear Lestrade, I accepted this case because I was virtually certain that Colonel Sebastian Moran could not resist such a tempting morsel as the Star of Rhodesia. I'm convinced that he's the brains behind this case and that he's on this train. Oh, and how would you go about finding out which one of the passengers is this Colonel Sebastian Moran? If he is one of the passengers. Well, I suggest that you start by questioning Miss Vedder. It might prove interesting. Huh? Oh. Who's there? Miss Feather, I want to ask you a few questions, and I must warn you. Anything you say may be used against you. Oh? Now, about your mother. It isn't your mother after all, is it? Perhaps if you explain. That coffin, we've examined it. And found the secret compartment. Oh, come on, let's have it. Have what? The old story. If you insist. The man approached me and asked me to take a coffin to Scotland. He offered me a hundred pounds. Were you aware that the coffin had a secret compartment? I was. What story did this person tell you to account for a man being concealed in the coffin? That someone had to leave London. Foreign agents were watching the train. Foreign agents. All right. Maybe I didn't believe that foreign agent story. You realize, of course, this makes you an accomplice. What was the name of the man who approached you? I don't remember. Uh, Miss Vera, the man who engaged you to take this coffin to Scotland, was it by any chance this man here? I say, old man, aren't you making a mistake? My dear Watson. Just what do you know about Major Duncan Bleak? I've known him for years. He's a member of my club. I say, is this a joke? Does the name Colonel Moran mean anything to you, sir? Colonel Moran? Yes, Colonel Sebastian Moran. Well, I'm afraid it doesn't. Good heavens, you don't think that oh, I... Oh, no, 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 of course not. You have the perfect alibi, Dr. Watson. Yes, 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 of course, of course. Good heavens, gentlemen, you're at perfect liberty to search my compartment, to search me. If you find the diamond, I... Now, that won't be necessary. The Star of Rhodesia has not been stolen. What's that, Mr. Holmes? An imitation was stolen. I have the real one. You've got it? My dear Lestrade, surely you didn't think I would allow Lady Margaret to retain the genuine diamond when I felt reasonably certain that an attempt would be made to steal it? I have had it in my possession almost from the moment I boarded the train. Confound it, Mr. Holmes. You had no right to do that. This is a police matter. Come on, let me have it. My job is to see that it wasn't stolen. It wasn't. Look, I don't know what this is all about, but I do know that i never seen this gentleman before in my life. I shall have to ask you to remain in your compartment until we reach Edinburgh. Uh, Inspector Lestrade. Huh? Oh, a uh, telegram for you, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry, old man. I'm afraid my friend owes you an apology. Oh, well, that's all right, Watson. In a case like this, naturally everyone is suspected. Well, we all make mistakes. Even Holmes is not infallible. And after all, the killer is still at large, you know. Yes, he is, isn't he? Well, good night. Good night, old boy. Don't worry. I think I'll have another little chat with that professor fellow. Something important, Lestrade? You have your secrets, Mr. Holmes. I have mine. This is Inspector Lestrade. Look here. Is this racket going to continue all night? Professor Kilbane, you told me you were on the staff of the University of Edinburgh. I said nothing of the kind. You most certainly did. I urge you. Mr. Holmes, here urge you. Oh, 
I merely said that I was a professor of mathematics and that I was returning to my home in Edinburgh. Well, it might be necessary to talk to you again. Later. You come pounding on this door again and I'll have the law on you. I am the law. Then stop barging in and out of my room like a chambermaid. Where is everybody? Doesn't want to open the door, probably. This should help us. Academic. Look again, old fellow. Scratch. Just a scratch. Like the one on Ronald Carstairs. Small dart. Apparently made of some soluble substance. Probably a gelatin preparation that melts in the wound. That's why you couldn't see anything on Carstairs. The murderer was about to get rid of the body. He heard the knock and became frightened. Here, let me have that, will you? from that door. Were you seen coming in here? No. Sherlock Holmes and the fat bloke are in the luggage van now. How about the guard in the corridor? He didn't see me. I fixed him temporarily. The guard in the van did. I had to kill him. Here, yeah, you'd better take this. This isn't the start of Rhodesia. You wouldn't be trying to double-cross me, would you? Sherlock Holmes got the diamond and replaced it with this imitation. Now that Scotland Yard inspector has the real star of Rhodesia. Was he with Holmes and Watson in the luggage van? No. Good, then he's probably in his compartment. But you'll have to hurry. I don't like it. Neither do I. All you have to do is to relieve him of the diamond. Scotland Yard inspector, why, that... that's something different. Naturally, it'll mean more money for you. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Come on. He's in there. He's got the diamond.
You use this. Hello. That fellow you put on guard isn't there. That's why I observe. Strange. What is? Stroud. Yeah. Help me to get him up onto the seat. <clears throat> He's coming too. Mm. Have me that water, will you? Oh, it's nothing very serious. I'll attend to it properly later on. Hmm. Poison like the others. Yeah, it's gone. The diamond's gone. Gone? Yeah. And we better search the murder at once? It's no use, old fellow. The man who killed him has the star, Rhodesia. What's that? It's an air pistol, Lestrade, that fires a poison dart. It's quite an unusual design. You were attacked because you had the diamond. Fortunately, this wasn't used on you. Hello, we're coming to a stop. Scottish police. Oh. I don't feel up to it, Mr. Holmes. Would you be good enough to talk to them? Certainly. Thank you. You keep quiet, old boy. Be back in a minute. Mr. Right. Holmes, this is Inspector MacDonald of the Edinburgh Police. How do you do? I happen to be in this district on another case, and I received this telegram from headquarters. You want to talk to Inspector Lestrade? In due time, but I'm in charge here. This is Scotland. You've crossed the border. We've had a spot of trouble here, Inspector. And that's why I'm here. And who are you, might I ask? Who's <laughs> Sherlock Holmes? And a private inquiry agent, eh? I've heard of you. Heard of him? Mr. Holmes has practically solved this case already. Watson. Will you clear the dining car? I'll want to ask a few questions. Yes, sir. And see that no one leaves his compartment until I need him for questioning. Very good, sir. Inspector Lestrade asked me to sit in with you. Mm, it's a bit unusual, but... Uh... The Scotland Yard think a great deal of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. They frequently ask his advice. Scotland Yard, eh? Where is this Inspector Lestrade? Now, Watson, will you see if Inspector Lestrade is sufficiently recovered to come into the dining car? Right, you are. I know all about you, and frankly, you're in for it. All I did was buy a coffin and bring it on the train. 
In my opinion, this is a matter for Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard's jurisdiction ended when you crossed the border, Inspector. So you say. That's a matter of opinion. Miss Vader is unquestionably in the plot. But you may not know Colonel Moran, however. I don't. Colonel Sebastian Moran? Is he in this? You know him? Unfortunately, I do. Uh, you may return to your compartment. You said unfortunately. Aye. I once had an encounter with Colonel Moran. The only time in my entire career I've been bested. The cleverest criminal since the late Professor Moriarty. And that I concur. Well, where is this Sebastian Moran? He's traveling on this train under the name of Major Duncan Bleak. What on earth are you talking about? Are you serious, Mr. Holmes? Constable, bring in Duncan Bleak. Aye, sir. Duncan Bleak? But he played for the gentleman at Lord's. Come in. Duncan Bleak? Yes? Inspector McDonald would like to see you. All right. Colonel Sebastian Moran, eh? It will give me great pleasure, Mr. Holmes, to meet up with that scoundrel again. You wanted to see me? Yes, Colonel Moran. You're under arrest. Oh, so you've managed to convince him that I'm the mythical Colonel Moran. Not mythical, Colonel. You've forgotten that affair at Inverness three years ago? I've never been in Inverness in my life. Do you mind if I search you? Go ahead. For an innocent man, you carry strange things in your pockets. A retired army officer, India. But you're in Scotland now, and there's a law against carrying firearms. Were well, you satisfied? Not quite, Colonel. Satisfied? This clears things up pretty well. <laughs> we'll be coming into Topham in a few minutes. The train doesn't stop at Topham, I'm afraid. I'm afraid you're wrong this time, Holmes. This train will stop at Topham. You're only delaying the inevitable, Colonel Moran. You can't get away. Donald, here's your man. Who pulled that cord? All right, Conductor. We get off here with our prisoner. Constables, take him off. Quite a struggle, Inspector McDonald. Good work, Mr. Holmes. Perhaps I underestimated you. Was it you who hit me? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. You must accept my apologies. Scott, it's Duncan Bleak. I mean, Colonel Sebastian Moran. Come on, old fellow, give me a hand. What's all this about? Where's Inspector McDonald? He's just gone off the train. He couldn't have. He couldn't. Oh, but he has. A very clever plot, Colonel Moran. Your henchmen, masquerading as policemen, come aboard the train, arrest you, stop the train, and take you off. But this is fantastic. Yes, it is, isn't it? And it's a scheme worthy of Colonel Sebastian Moran. He planned the whole thing, including the coffin with the secret compartment. And in case anything went wrong, the pseudo-policeman to come aboard and take him off the train before it reached Edinburgh. Then uh, where is Lestrade? Well, I imagine at the moment he's pretty well occupied. Just a minute, MacDonald. Get over there, all of you. You're under arrest. Now, put up your hands. Driver, take us to the nearest police station. Come on, get over here. 
Then the poke in the eye I received from Sherlock Holmes wasn't an accident after all. That is a matter of opinion. Come on, get in. Send that over as soon as possible, will you? Very good, sir. It's a telegram to the real Edinburgh police. Ask him to meet us when we arrive. But how did you know this fellow wasn't the real Inspector MacDonald? Elementary, my dear Watson. In the first place, he didn't put handcuffs on Colonel Moran, so I had to do it myself. And in the second place, Inspector MacDonald during the fight was more hindrance than help, which is not characteristic of a real policeman. Amazing, Holmes. I'm covering such a fiendish plot with so little evidence. Yes, I forgot to mention that uh, I also happen to know the real Inspector MacDonald of the Edinburgh Police. Oh, was it was the start in on all of this? Yes, and surprisingly enough, he grasped the situation immediately. It's very unusual. Let's hope he hasn't overdone it. <laughs> very clever, Holmes. You've got me, but you haven't got the star of Rhodesia. Oh, but I have. If in the dark I could substitute a big hulk like the star for you, Colonel Moran, it's no very great feat to, uh... switch a little thing like a diamond. 